Calling to order a uh, regular meeting of council on June 13th. Um, so get straight to it. My opening remarks, so I'll keep try and keep them fairly short and sweet because we do have quite a few items tonight. Uh, I did want to advise council that I heard back directly from Minister Danielle Allen today with regards to the email that I'd sent about the state roads and working with DTI. So as DTI will continue to manage provincial roads, we as a council will continue to compile the requests that are made for road repairs and also encourage our community members to submit their issues and concerns. They will consider ways for us to better engage directly with DTI in the future, but in the meantime, we'll need to rely on our CAO to continue to work with the DTI district engineer for ordinary maintenance matters and to ensure that the needs of our community are brought forward for consideration. I've also been advised that DTI is developing a web page to support local governments in identifying requests for funding of provincial municipal highways and they will will be notified by DTI once this new web page is available. So overall, not a ton of changes yet, but they're obviously actively having conversations and they did encourage us to continue what we're doing. The approach is, um, as he said, is, is a good approach to take and that's, at least in some cases, we did get some good action and we'll just continue to do that for now. And um, I know our local minister, Bill Hogan, again, with his office, when we can consult with him as well and find make sure we're all on the same page. So, um, I, it must have been write your letters day today for legislatures out for the summer. So I did receive a response back from Minister Chris Austin as well regarding the letter that went out about the jail and the potential that we where we would like to be considered. And he said that the province is currently putting together the list of criteria and that they want to move lightning fast because I think they were actually already shaping the ground in Fredericton. Uh, they want to move fairly quickly. So they want to go to building this year. So he said they he will be uh, doing more follow up in the next probably two to three weeks, I'd say. So that's, it was fairly short and sweet, but at least it was acknowledged. <laughs> um, I will say on that note, Laura and I did have a good conversation this afternoon about land and they're based on us stating that we had certainly heard from potential or from land people that own land that are kind of have raised their hand to say I would sell for that reason. So um, there are opportunities and options. So it's now probably the time to really outline what makes sense and if access to water is a criteria and we actually have an opportunity to look at this, then we want to have some options ready. So I think that'll be for the CAO to dig into here in the coming weeks. Um, and the last point is I just wanted to comment that I've been out a lot lately attending events and there have been days where I've attended multiple events and days where I've attended multiple events and there's still other events ongoing. So it is great to see so many different activities planned and, and the desire from many groups to do even more. And so from a personal standpoint, even the Best Western had their 14th car show well, this past Sunday and the staff reported that it was the largest attendance that they'd ever had, which is great. They raised the most money they've ever had as a result. So it's good that we're seeing lots of people get out. So I hope everyone uh, will take the opportunity to take part in the events that are happening. And as an event organizer myself, I know <laughs> the efforts that go into planning big events. You've got lots on the schedule this summer. So you know, if you, when it feels very rewarding when we get lots of participation. So if you're not receiving, for anyone listening, or that might get mentioned, uh, Jim, <laughs> if you're not receiving the town email communications, please consider signing up because there are weekly notices that go out to notify you of events that are happening. And it is a good, a great way to find out what's going on in the community. So that's my opening remarks. We will move on to 
Yes, approval of the agenda, and we do have some additions. So I will, do you want to go over the additions, Laura? And then sure. Yeah, so we have three additions. The first is to add item number four, declaration of conflict of interest. Second addition is item 10.8, asphalt spreader lease opportunity and the third and final addition is item 11.4 under committee of the whole illegal okay so um could i get a motion that the agenda for the regular public council meeting dated june 13th 2023 be approved with the following ch changes addition of item number four item number 10.8 and item number 11.4 as laura described Motion by Councilor Williams, seconded by Councilor Bradbury. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions on that? Already? Everybody in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary mind, please say nay. <coughs> Motion carried. So I will move on to item number four declaration of conflict of interest. Does anybody have anything to declare this evening? None, we will move on. Uh, first item is approval of the minutes for uh, May 23rd. And is that our regular council? Yes, our, yes regular. So our regular council uh, meeting. Does, does everybody have a chance to review the minutes? And do we have a motion to approve the minutes of May 23rd as distributed? Moved by, we'll say, uh, Council McCartney, seconded by Deputy Mayor. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary to mine is nay. Motion carried. We have second set of meeting minutes. That was for our special meeting um, on May 30th. Do we have a, a motion for approval of special meeting minutes of May 30th, 2023 is distributed? Moved by Councillor Bellier, seconded by Councillor Bradbury. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, nay. Motion carried. All right, moving right along. So we last, I guess the last regular council meeting we agreed to form two new special committees um, and tonight we would like to look at discussing who might be willing to chair those committees so we, that we can look to start to decide when <laughs> those committees might be able to meet in particular the one of bigger significance I would say well they both are but uh, the the one to discuss the, all of our policies in regards to banners, proclamations, lighting of buildings, um, anything in relation to that. Uh, and there's a couple other items I think that we added to that. Um, I'd, I'd like to make that fairly timely. So we will try and give a, ourselves a not a really tight timeline, but we want to be meeting even though it's we're approaching summer I don't want to drag this one out because I think at the end of the day we're we're really on hold with everything. So if we get proclamations, those are those can't be brought forward. So we don't want to wait too too long. Does anybody want to volunteer to chair? Let's we'll start with that one. Sure. Councillor Williams. <laughs> Perfect. I'll help you. I'll help you. Are you going to sit on that committee too, Deputy Mayor? So sit on that. Anybody's welcome to obviously sit in those meetings. And I think, in general, we need to, uh, CAO, you need to identify a staff member too to sit on that too. Toby, in particular, with her role, I think it's critical and important. And um, whether you guys engage in subcommittee meetings or a special meeting or two with general public or people from associations to get feedback. Um, definitely encourage you to do that. And I'm sure I will likely attend some of those meetings, but I'm going to let somebody else share a special meeting with them. <laughs> okay, so 
do we have someone ready to make a motion to appoint Councillor Williams to chair the special committee to review our current informal banner policy, etc. Moved by Councillor McCartney, <coughs> seconded by go with Councillor Leach. <laughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 I'm very minded. Okay. Motion carried. Our second special committee is for uh, to review the current EMO plan. And obviously both of these committees are to bring back recommendations to council to then take to staff. So does anybody, what, would anybody like to chair that special committee? Everybody's dodging <laughs> no eye contact at all here. <laughs> I, I, I'm just look at that. I don't know if I should declare a conflict of interest because I'm actually uh, a member of EMO through Share Services. I don't think it would be considered a conflict of interest <coughs> yeah, because you, unless you're, are you, we're not you're money yeah, money we're, yeah, it's yeah. Did I hear that was a nod? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I did not think I saw it. No. Yeah. Yeah, Jeffrey. Yeah. Oh, you want to help you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm wow. allowed, yeah. All right. <laughs> on, I'm definitely, I'll, 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 I'll stay involved in that one big time, right. too. That's a big sure. one, I think. Yeah, it's a big one. <laughs> All right. So, do we have a motion to appoint? Uh, Councillor Bradbury to chair <coughs> the special committee to review the current EMO plan for the town. Motion by Councillor Williams, second by Deputy Mayor. <laughs> All those in favor, favor signify by saying aye. Contrary <coughs> minded nay. Motion carried. All right, we've plugged right away. <laughs> Item number six business arriving from the minute, or sorry. Item number seven, presentation. So we do have a presentation tonight. Um, we have uh, Trina McDonald and her, your official title with EIA is, what's your official title? Um, I'm a consultant with uh, Downtown Woodside. Okay, so Trina's going to give us a presentation tonight. More, I think you have a I do. presentation yes. already. So you can come right up to the podium. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, Your Worship, members of council, thank you so much for allowing us this opportunity to share some information about business improvement areas and downtown Woodstock. As mentioned, my name is Trina McDonald. I've been working with uh, downtown Woodstock for a few years, uh, consulting with them. I'm also the president of downtown New Brunswick, and I work with Business Credit to North on the north side of Brunswick. So I uh, hope you uh, enjoy the presentation. <coughs> Next slide. Yep. Thank you. So I thought it would be important to start with what a business improvement area is. Business improvement areas are a geographically defined area within the central business district of a municipality. They're traditionally the downtown, the uptown, or the main street of the community. Uh, they're designed as a self-help um, organization or area to revitalize your downtowns, keep them healthy, and safe, keep them prospering. We are governed as a collective by the Business Improvement Areas Act of New Brunswick, and there are 22 business improvement areas in our province. The image you see on the screen represents all of those business improvement areas. They're north to south, east to west, Francophone and Anglo. And as a collective, downtown New Brunswick um, advocates for those 20 to business improvement areas to the federal government and the provincial government and uh, our municipalities. Next slide, please. So the benefits of having a BIA or business improvement area in your community, we're all working for the same thing. Those commercial property owners and businesses are looking to create a prosperous and vibrant downtown, a great place to live, work, play, shop, and it's what our community and the businesses want, the public and the community. It's a win-win for everyone. Next slide. So business, excuse me, business improvement associations are the organizations that manage the business improvement area. 
they're made up of a collection of non-residential property owners and those property owners are, are um, levying themselves, no one is forcing them to do that. It's the purest form of economic development you'll ever see. Commercial property owners are taking money out of their own pocket. They're saying, I want to pay an extra levy. I want that levy to go back to the Business Improvement Association to reinvest in that business area for the good of not only the businesses, but the general public. And to put that money into capital projects, into events, into safety programs, and a variety of other things, as well as running the organization. Uh, that's the geographical boundaries of downtown Woodstock. As you will see, um, it doesn't include the other side of the, the river. Um, and how that evolved, just some background there, in the 1980s, when BIA um, was created in New Brunswick, predominantly, that was done with a cooperation agreement. It was a federal, provincial, and municipal partnership. But in order to get funding through the cooperation agreement, you needed a BIA in your community. So at that time, um, usually it was a CAO and, and a collection of business owners. They went around and said, you want to be in the BIA? And it was a yes and a no. And so that's how that unusual boundary happened. Next slide. So the Woodstock Business Improvement Corporation, which is the legal name, and we all know it affectionately as downtown Woodstock, it was established in 1986. They're going to be celebrating their 36th year in existence in September. And the commercial property owners, those non-residential property owners, are levying themselves an extra 20 cents per hundred dollars of assessed value on their properties. And that comes back to downtown Woodstock to operate. Uh, the board of directors is made up of a collection of um, various business people and property owners. We also have one seat on the board. Uh, for a council representative, and that's based on the Business Improvement Area Act, and Council Williams, we're very, very pleased to have her on that. Um, as well, we've always kept a seat at the table for the CAO for the town of Woodstock, and that's to ensure that we have um, seamless communication and transparency between our organization and the town. So the municipal tax base for your core BIA is just over $14 million. Um, I think it's important to, to know that. Uh, we saw a slight increase in between 2021 and 2022. Obviously, there were a lot of things with COVID that caused assessments to, to drop uh, substantially, uh, a little bit. Um, the operating budget in 2022 was close to $29,000. So downtown Woodstock, uh, we believe that we leverage dollars very effectively for the benefit of the entire community. There are limited resources that we use effectively, and our members in the community will benefit directly and indirectly from our activities. So let's talk about uh, what we've accomplished over the years. Uh, because there are uh, new members of council, we thought it would be important to uh, just give you a little bit of history. Um, and I'll start by saying, in 20, uh, 2015, the province of Brunswick came out with the planning grant program. And that was specifically for BIAs. It was $250,000 in which BIAs could access for planning. They could do uh, urban design plans, parking plans, and strategic plans. Your BIA decided to do a strategic plan. And everything from that plan or forward has come as a springboard for these programs and activities that they did. Next slide. So the first one we wanted to share with you is the Facade Restoration and New Business Grant Program. This program was established in 2016, and it was to help businesses and property owners enhance the look of their property. It could be used for signage, it could be used for painting, landscaping, a variety of things. And over time, that program has adapted and evolved based on the circumstances and budget. But over that four-year period, um, downtown Woodstock has given $73,000 plus back to the businesses and the commercial property owners for their enhancement. It, it's a benefit for the town as well because those enhancements increase assessments and increase mm -hmm. tax base. Next slide, please. So as I said, it was, it's evolved over time. The reason it's evolved over time is things have happened in downtown Woodstock that um, the board of directors I think are very visionary uh, in your community. And I can say that because I, I uh, work with all 22 BIAs in the province. So um, the facade grant itself 
PI sorry, businesses can access up to twenty five hundred dollars, twenty five percent of a project that they were doing for signage. So some uh, grants were very small, some were, were higher, and then they created the restoration and infill portion of this grant program, and that was directly related to the the devastating fire that was in near downtown. When that fire happened, there was a building that was pretty much burnt to the ground and damaged to another one. And at that time, Mr. Rose was on the fence about whether we would be rebuilding that building or not. So the board stepped up and said, let's help, let's help in some way if we can. And downtown Woodstock contributed $25,000 to the establishment of that particular building so we didn't end up with a hole in our downtown. And we also worked with him to ensure that the new building that was built looked like it fit in that it wasn't out of place or out of character for what we had. Um, other projects have been the Newman and Slip Pharmacy. They did a excuse me, a repointing of their brick, and so did River Valley with a full restoration of their outside brick as well. So they got larger grants in this program. Other visionary thing that downtown Woodstock did um, when they created this program is created a new business development grant. And that grant is for new businesses that open in the downtown. They can access up to $1,000 and that's for interior renovations to help retrofit that new space, space for that startup because we know how expensive it is to get your business up and running. And that is taken advantage of, like you saw Matt in the first slide from Solstice. Um, he he's, was one of their students of that grant. So, just a, a couple of pictures. You can see some of the things we did with the rebuilding of the Rose Building. We helped with that uh, farm market stairs, farm market doors. We also do a shop local and shop safe programs over the years, a number of them, part of the community, um, reminding people that shopping local is important. Uh, with that, we've incorporated reusable bags for the merchants and for the public. Um, and uh, can I get the next slide, please? Sure. Thank you. Um, this, was, this was something we did during COVID. COVID changed everything for everybody. So what downtown Woodstock did is they created an opening safe grant and we allowed businesses to access up to $500 for PPE equipment to get their businesses up and running during that time. Um, so you'll see the market and Greco there, they all took advantage of that. We had 15 local businesses take advantage of that uh, opening safe program for, for us, with us. Um, and it continued during COVID. It was an exceptional time to be that communication conduit for our, our businesses on programs they could access, how they were going to open between red, yellow, green, and back to yellow, and all kinds of things. So that was a, a real focus during that time frame for us and those local businesses. One of our programs that is the biggest bang for the buck is our downtown Woodstock dollars. We created this program in 2016. These downtown dollars are universal dollars that can be used for participating businesses, just like cash. Um, the kicker to this is we have a sale. Downtown Woodstock has a sale, and we sell the dollars at 80 cents on a dollar. Um, today, for example, we have a sale. Yeah, that's what I thought. And so, what that means is uh, you can uh, apply for some next one. Uh, we do have a 97% return rate on these dollars, which is the other big kicker with this shop local program. So during the sale, the public can come in and they pay $400 cash and they get 500 of our dollars, downtown dollars. They're getting a free hundred dollars that they can spend freely in the downtown. There's no expiry on these dollars and um, the merchants love them because you can use them to um, buy pizza, you can use them for a coffee at Tim Hortons or you can pay your insurance, whatever you like. Um, yes. um, so again, in 2016, since then, we have invested $290,000 just over in downtown dollar program that are been circulating in the economy of the downtown. And today we have a sale and sold 40,000 downtown dollars. And so our total is now up to $331,000. Huge economic impact um, for the downtown. Um, great thing, this is a great benefit to the public too because we're getting a break. Um, so we traditionally, we, we do it, um, Spring and uh, prior to Christmas as well, just prior to the the festivities um, going into Christmas. <clears throat> We've also um, established an online presence as part of that strategic plan 
planning um, with Facebook and development of a website, which we have all of our information in our businesses. Um, during COVID in particular, this was something that was very, very um, well received. We were sharing with the public that our businesses were, were ready to take care of them safely. So that was a really big component. So I'm kind of jumping now into 2022. And in 2022, the Rediscover Main Street program came out. That was a program announced by ACOA in March. Uh, BIAs, it was for BIAs, Chambers of Commerce, and Tourism Associations in particular. Uh, when the minister announced it in uh, March, you had till the end of April to get your application in. And in July, downtown Woodstock received confirmation that they were going to get $37,750. Um, we believe our BIA hit above its weight with the COA in this program. We exceeded their deliverables, and they walked away extremely pleased with the accomplishments of downtown Woodstock. So in the photos you see there, um, part of the application that we, we did and part of the work we did was to do concerts and events in the downtown. Uh, downtown Woodstock paid for the concerts at the night market that the chamber put on. We did afternoon sessions and concerts that went on from, and in December we did, um, David Miles, and all of, all of it was paid for through downtown Woodstock, and the proceeds from the David Miles concert went to the food bank. And I think $3,000 was raised for the local food bank. Um, as well as the, in the Rediscover Main Street program, part of the component was a social media campaign, and we structured it around Let's Meet Downtown and hashtag heart, um, the heart of our community. Sorry. Um, and this was great because every business that wanted to participate could. It was no cost to them, but whether you were a restaurant or you were a, a real estate company or you were a lawyer, you could still participate because you were meeting downtown for a coffee or you were meeting downtown for a It was uh, well received. The numbers were through the work group on the engagement of this campaign, uh, which also blew a COA away. We also did a double feature. Movies by the River, um, which was well attended. Again, uh, totally part of this program. And finally, just to, there's a couple pictures up with the setup of the movies and the Mods concert. We ended up with 12 concerts at the Night Market, the Connell House, and the Square, movie nights, full social media. We also did a digital ad campaign and radio campaign. Uh, let's meet downtown and the heart of our community, and again, exceeded their expectations. Um, but what, what was good with that program, too, is this was all for the community. It was to bring the community back <coughs> to downtown and uh, give them some activities, some events during, during uh, last year. Now, here's the exciting part. I'm bringing you back to 2023. 2023, Minister Daniel Allant announced uh, the beginning of May the Downtown New Brunswick Investment Initiative. And that is a program that we uh, worked with his department on. It's specifically for the BIAs of New Brunswick. Brunswick. It is a $500,000 program. Um, and BIAs can apply under three categories, capital projects, planning, and events. Your downtown submitted two applications. Um, and they received approval for both of those. One is for um, planning, and it's going to be an expansion plan for the BIA to look and consider it to, in, uh, expanding to the other side of the river and those periphery properties. Um, to put into perspective, it's a very extensive process. In order to expand the BIA, you need to get two-thirds of the number of commercial property owners to agree to pay the levy in the new area, and you also need two-thirds of the assessed value. Of those properties to agree. So it's a twofold test. If you can meet that twofold test, then that uh, we'd be coming to municipal council to enact the bylaw to collect the levy, and then it must go on to the minister of local government for his final approval. So it's it's not just as easy as expanding. You need to go through a process. But downtown Woodstock is going to get funding for that, and they also applied for events. So they're going to be doing a strawberry festival and a movie night back to school. So they're getting $5,000 for their events and $10,000 for their planning program. Uh, again, all great things. Uh, 
on the horizon. And as I said, in 2023, we just had our sale for $40,000. Okay. Awesome. So, um, and I guess we can move that next slide is the end. <laughs> well, maybe not. Um, so, again, we believe we, we leverage dollars effectively. Um, we do it for the benefit of not only the business members, but the entire community. And again, downtown Woodstock, we believe, is one of the purest forms of economic development that you will see, BIAs in general. And uh, we hope we shared some information that's uh, beneficial for you. Anyone have any questions <clears throat> for Trina? I really appreciate you coming and, and presenting tonight, though. <clears throat> you didn't even really have a something like this with the last council. And it's nice to get the summary directly from you and from the team. And it's nice to see Councillor Williams be really active and involved. And she gives us lots of updates, too. So I feel like we have a lot more insight and knowledge into the BIA and what you're doing. And uh, we certainly, I'm excited that both of them Get approved, and I'm sure there's lots of talk for <laughs> other things. And, and your worship, yeah. Um, and I'd like to um, thank John Thompson. He has been a true leader for downtown Woodstock for many, many years, <coughs> and uh, it's a result of their the boards that they've had in place and where they are today, and to, and to the relationship that we've had with the municipality. I'd just like to say that Woodstock is incredibly fortunate to have probably the most experienced and knowledgeable person in the province yeah. <laughs> with respect to the BIAs uh, working with us. That has made a huge amount of difference. And uh, so I think is able to uh, really do all the background work for our uh, association as well as. Asset, but I think it's made a difference in uh, our ability to really be effective. So, yeah, excellent. Anyone have any questions? All good. Let's go along. It's good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very I appreciate much. it. Very nice. <laughs> we usually note and offer a moment of, <laughs> in case you don't want to stick around for the rest, you don't feel you need to. <laughs> uh, we're never offended. <laughs> okay. Thank you. For Thank coming. you. <laughs> okay, moving on to item eight, CAO update. Uh, CAO, we've got an action item two, don't we? On the um, first item, eight point one, Town Square project update. That's correct. It's in our package, isn't it? It should be on the table. Yeah. Um, so I'll start with that. Um, you have in front of you uh, the letter from uh, uh, CBCL. Um, they've been working on the uh, engineering part of the town square project. <laughs> so there's been a couple tenders that were already previously awarded. Um, it's supposed to be the last, the last one. Uh, which was, of course, the bigger one. So when we when we did those, if you recall earlier, um, we didn't announce the the winner of the bid or anything because they were coming in higher than we uh, had hoped. Um, so we asked uh, that they go back to the drawing board to talk with the at that time the uh, the low bidder, if you will, um, on that who was E Cummings Contracting to. Uh, so the engineers and that company sat down to to go over the project, if you will, to help um, reduce costs or costs. Sorry, <clears throat> not to uh, were there other options that would be more beneficial cost-wise for us. So um, they did that, um, and they're listed there, uh, items one, two, three, and four. I'll, I'll just go over them quickly uh, to remove um, asphalt under the concrete paver stones and lay a layer of geogrid, which is like a Kind of like snow fence, but it's uh, um, more structurally uh, sound. Um, change the street light model um, that was done, and actually the, the one that came up with is a lot closer represent, rep representation of what we actually have, which will be good 
when you look at the other ones that are still going to be in place, blend, to blend, better. blend in. Yeah, far far better actually. So that was kind of a win win. Um, they deleted uh, three trees and, and their grades. Uh, there was an excessive uh, uh, amount of trees down there, and that was a twofold thing. One was yes, it, it did reduce the cost, but uh, also as far as uh, talk with Greg Stokes, the director of public works. Was going to make it a lot easier for winter winter maintenance down there as well too and uh, then there was the add 10 square meters of sidewalk and prep uh, in one area just by doing that there was some other changes to the uh, to the groundwork so there's four items so when you look at the bottom of that page you can see the uh, the initial bid price with the reduction of the four items uh, coming in a total of four hundred and ninety-eight thousand three hundred three dollars uh, plus HST, and the uh, based on the tender results and with the revisions, uh, Mark Kohler from CBCL is, is recommending that we award this to E Cummings Contracting Inc. That's open for questions. Questions for sure. Okay. Did everybody find that it was? Everybody's got the attachment. Okay, it's in the it's an email that uh, the CAO sent. Would have been on uh, it was Tuesday. 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 Sorry, yeah, Tuesday today. Oh, yeah. So if you check your inbox for first thing this morning, there was uh, a couple attachments. It's the Woodstock Plaza up to grades document. Does anybody have any questions? Go ahead. The only question I have, only because I didn't see the original <coughs> plan. Um, I know you and I have talked about the stage was taken out a while ago, that kind of stuff. But um, how many trees were there? Seven. Seven. So there'll be four now. Four. Okay. Just being sure it wasn't like none. Like one tree. <laughs> no. <laughs> one tree. Yeah. Yeah. One tree. Yeah. <laughs> Charity <laughs> burn. Unless it's like a big. Greg. Tree. Greg probably would have liked to have one or <laughs> no less. Trees. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there, there is that. And I talked to Greg, and I talked to the folks yeah. from CBCL and, and and Jim from and Scott and Trace. You know, there's the public works public works world, and then there's the landscape architect world, and normally they're not best friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but you get to find that happy happy medium, and I believe we we did with that. So. Well, and I know we didn't actually create it yet, but we talked about having at some point a communication something. So I'm pretty sure that that group would be happy to notice those some trees coming. <laughs> yeah. 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 Speaking of two people, we'll end up on it. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions on that? So far, it's Palmer's benches and and uh, what's the other thing? Sort of on top. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They probably be here Thursday, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, I guess did we maybe confirm for council and general public the decision or not to begin in the start date? A loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that, that we talked about that when I initially talked to and, I, and again I hadn't talked to all of them originally, but they wanted to see it done sooner than later um, at the beginning. Now of course we're further along in the spring summer than. Um, than uh, we thought, uh, probably about 30 days, probably. I guess we were in hopes of, of May, sometime in May. Um, we're still talking with some of them down there, uh, probably the, the largest portion of the owner would still like to start tomorrow. We could start tomorrow. So um, I did talk to the contractor about that. They would like to start as soon as possible. Um, that being said, by the time um, now, like I said, the pavers are coming. By the time they get lined up and ready to go, it might be another few weeks. It will definitely be another few weeks uh, uh, to begin with. Um, but the fear is um, from, I know, what one family down there that has the main building, of uh, if you put it off with weather, maybe we've had a bad, you know, but we just had a long rain stretch by the looks of it by the time we get home tonight we're gonna have another five or six days yeah. of, of rain again if we put it off what chances do you do of it being bad and then not being able to to finish it and if we don't finish it 
by the time the frost comes, coming. we will lose it. We will lose that portion of it. So mm -hmm. we're already on, I won't call it board time with it, but we're already, it, it's extended past what it was supposed to, what supposed to be. It's supposed to be projected time and do I had asked Brad Walton that he wasn't hundred percent certain, but it, it, it could be quite it could be quite quite lengthy. It'll it'll be at least a month. Be the better part of the summer, really. It will. Yeah. The we met down on site um, to kind of go over the scope of work of how I mean the goal was and they're very conscious of it, which was nice nice to, to hear of uh, the least disruption to traffic. Mm -hmm and pedestrians and the stores so of starting out because it's actually going to start out in the center line center lane of the road right to to grade it because the way the water flows down there is, is terrible so that portion will be done first <clears throat> we're talking about replacing some services we've been actually videoing the sewer lines which actually look really good which is a positive <clears throat> we're checking into the water we went with assumptions of having replaced everything um but um we're finding that there's a lot of copper, which is a which is a good thing because copper is fairly it's fairly new. Um, it, uh, there's copper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the ground. It's it's in, it varies. It varies in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's it's a lot of juggling with it, and uh, you know, it's a busy time of year downtown. Lots going on. So, but. Um, they're going to be very conscious of, of being able to work with uh, with everyone for that. So, okay. So, so in order, yeah. Pay, when you expect the papers to be here? They could be here as early as Thursday. Oh. Yeah. They've been yeah. texting asking yeah. about no, uh, no unloading. That are hold up no, that, that was the purpose. The the fear was mm -hmm. those those pavers really more than anything, which was kind of funny. You wouldn't think that would be it, but that was one of the items that was uh, uh, concerned about uh, getting here on time. So. And if you recall, that's been that's been, that's a, been a couple months yeah. at least that we awarded that one. So, yeah. Yeah. but that one was the main one because pretty much started. Okay, are we now under budget? You have to look to your left on that one. If that one, like it was coming in under, but I guess I wasn't thinking about factoring in those other those other tenders. But we are bidding back. Three hundred and nine thousand three ninety six from RDC. Matt, that's fifty percent up to that total, yeah. so that will come off of uh, the whole grand total. Yeah. yeah. So what it looks like, the best thing is it. I, I didn't. I guess like I said, I didn't factor in those other ones, but I was thinking that it was looking better than so. I mean, that makes more sense. But I think we'll come in still. Like I don't think we'll even end up maxing out all of RDCs if they stay on. Yeah. That's good. All right. Do any more questions? Do I, have, do I have someone willing to make a motion to award the town square tender to E Cummings Contracting Inc. in the amount of $498,303 plus HST? Motion mm -hmm. by Councilor Barton. Seconded by Councilor Bradbury. Uh, any, any further questions? Good. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary and minded nay. Motion carried. Okay. The other CAO update item 8.2, uh, because the well house project is under, the previous project is under legal review, that will move to um, committee of the whole for discussion under legal uh, I'm moving along to I have nine new business. First one is the street closure request for Tim Hortons. Yeah. I've got, yeah. I've got to just highlight. We were going to highlight. Yep. Okay. Laura, could you go over the? Yeah, sure. So we received an application to mayor and council from the Woodstock Recreation and Community Services for a street closure for a portion of Main Street, the Grafton Bridge, and a portion of Route 105 between the hours of 8.25 and 8.35 a.m. on Saturday, July 29th, to allow athletes safely to, um, to compete in the race. Um, here. I'm sorry, 
Yep. 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 So <laughs> motion would be to close a portion of Main Street, the Grafton Bridge, and a portion of Route 105 between the hours of 8.25 a.m. and 8.35 a.m. on Saturday, July 29th to allow athletes to compete safely in the race. Anybody want to make that motion? Sure. Dep Dep Mayor on the motion, seconded by Go Chance Bradbury. Mm -hmm. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded nay. Motion carried. Do we have another <coughs> street closure? Or can you give sure. me that one, please? So this one was for the Kids of Steel event, uh, submitted also by the Woodstock Recreation and Community Services for a street closure of Helen Street, Elizabeth, Creighton Street South, Cook and Kirkpatrick Street on Saturday, July the 1st, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. for the Kids of Steel event. Did I get a motion to close Helen Elizabeth Creighton Street South Cook and Kirkpatrick Streets on Saturday, July 1st, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. for the kids of state? And take Councillor Williams on the motion, second by Councillor McCartney. Any questions? All those in favor? Yes, go ahead. This will be well added. Both of these are going to be well added. Yes. Yeah, and they've been. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, we've got um, pull up. There we go. Okay, moving on to item nine point three. That's the finance committee terms of reference. So this document is largely been rewritten <laughs> from the first iteration. So, did everybody have a chance to review this? Um, and I guess, I don't know if, if anybody's got any questions, both uh, Chris and can help answer or myself. Cancel Briarfair, you had some questions on the first. This is largely rewritten. So I don't know if you I think it addressed and Kristen would agree what you had questioned last time as well as Kristen. So hopefully it's satisfactory. We would like to get this committee up and running. It's a it will certainly help play a key role for us <laughs> as council for budgeting, which we really need to get started on for 2024, believe it or not. So if no one has any questions at the moment, I would ask if there is, a, if someone would like to make a motion to approve the terms of reference for the finance committee. I'll move it. Okay, moved by Councillor Brown. Okay. Seconded by Councillor Bradbury. On the ball's name. <laughs> any questions? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Reminded nay. Motion carried. I think maybe a while ago we might have had Councillor Martin <laughs> volunteer to. You were volunteer. Darn, I remember that. Okay. Um, are we still okay to chair that committee? I would co-chair it with you. Co-chair. Oh, <laughs> 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 okay. The 
instance, I would make a, I would ask to make a motion tonight to appoint Councillor Martin as chair of the committee. Um, I think. I'll make that. <laughs> <laughs> um, will certainly help, and I know Kristen will play a really pivotal role on that committee, as will CAO and myself. We all need to be basically in attendance at them, so we'll help with reports and that. But. Um, it's nice to have somebody other than us chair chair it if possible. So did okay. We had uh, deputy mayor on the motion, seconded. Oh, Councillor Williams on the second. Any questions on it? <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, mind and nay. Motion carried. So moving on to item 9.4, consideration of first and second reading of bylaw, it's 160.1, correct? 160.1, bylaw regulating the use of the water and sewer system of the town of Woodstock and the rates to be charged there for. So did everybody get a chance to read through? Again, this is an attachment in a different email that was sent. But did everybody have opportunity to review? And do we, I guess, CAO, do you want to share some details? Sure. Or do yeah. a rundown? I do. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So, the first thing I'll mention is that it, it'll reference appendix. Um, oh, yeah. The appendix. Appendix A. Schedule A. Sorry, I knew that didn't yeah. sound right. And so and it references in the bylaw that when we feel we will be able to bring forth things forth to council like for uh, recommendations for changing of prices. Anything that's in that schedule A could change. We don't have to redo the whole bylaw every time. We can just pass a motion to council to amend schedule A. So that makes things happen shorter times of going through the whole process process again. So uh, there's really two parts to it. The, the first part of the bylaw, everything outside of Schedule A, is pretty much what your your typical stuff that, that you will have. Um, I will point out, uh, I guess, a, a few things. One, in regards to um, uh, ownership, if you will. Um, this one proposes that uh, when we talk about a water or sewer service, that's the pipe that is from the, the main to the home. So uh, the proposed is that on the water, that the portion of that pipe that's on, if it's on municipal right of way or the owner's right of way, they're responsible for that part. The sewer, however, is the whole length. The owner of the building owns it, even that, even the portion on the town right of way. We did a lot of work to look uh, homework on looking at other municipalities, and it's all over the place, really, um, what it is. Um, there's not really a consistency. The water, if there's a hole in the pipe and you dig it up, there's no argument, you know where it is, you can tell who, who's uh, responsible, uh, or who owns it, I should say, what side. With the sewer, there's been issues in the past, and we've got burn on it more than once, where an issue may have started on the homeowner side, if you will, and then it gets pushed down further, and then we're responsible afterwards for beating up streets. So that is a common um, trend. Uh, from what we've seen is that sewers are the homeowners, the whole thing. So that was one thing that uh, um, um, we thought was a change because before it was, and it's gone back and forth where we were responsible for everything, and then the homeowner was. It was just it was getting too uh, too gray and too too murky. So that was one that we. Uh, decided to go with um, the very important one um, uh, in section 4d uh, an individual who receives a water and sewer bill may qualify for an assistance benefit low income and seniors on a fixed low household income of 47,700 or less will be offered a 15% discount once el eligibility is has been approved the income amount will be adjusted annually according to the Canada Revenue Agency standards. 
So we wanted to make sure that we could help uh, help those folks out. <laughs> they were the two main ones. Uh, another one that would, would is a repeat, but I, I will will say it um, on the last page before the schedule in regards to check valves and backflow devices. Um, that was it was worded before that you had to have one. But when you read it, when you read it <laughs> 10 times, I think well, 10 different, <laughs> it, was, it was really wasn't well written. So we did tweak it not that long ago, but it's definitely uh, in there. Um, I think quite clearly to make sure that uh, um, every household, every business, every, everyone has to have a backflow device for your, for your sewer. Um, <clears throat> municipalities are not held responsible for any damage for water and sewer damages. So, moving to the um, Schedule A, um, and I guess I will, uh, might be a good time to say that um, if council decides to do first and second meeting tonight, um, I think it's important, I'm sure Mayor Jones will, will most uh, equally say it as well, that we have to start this process because this month of June is very important to get this going. We can still do first and second reading tonight and make changes for the next meeting. Um, if between tonight and June 27th, we feel there's changes, we can make those. I say that because the first one that comes up in regards to uh, water and sewer connections is a huge change. Um, before, basically hookup fees were, were cheap. Um, we weren't coming anywhere near close to covering costs. Um, and it's been proposed that we um, basically uh, an estimate will be provided to the owner before work begins and that both sides will sign off on it and you will be charged with the actual cost of what it costs the town of Woodstock to install your water or sewer service. Um, Greg was in late this afternoon and provided another document to me of another municipality that isn't quite to that degree, but it's still um, a very hefty, I guess, cost uh, would be true clock cost, but it's probably like 75% of cost. Uh, so that could be um, something to think about. Uh, further down in um, that page six, it talks about the different tiers. Tier one, uh, it goes tier one, two, three, and four. So tier one of $550 per year. And uh, they would be for customers who paid 450 and below previously, um, and that's through, Kristen, correct me if I'm wrong, that we knew that through uh, history of being able to search, to research that. Uh, tier two, uh, $725 per year, they would be customers that have, would have paid between 451 and $600. Tier three, $825, and they were customers who would have paid between 601 and $750. And finally, a tier four of $925 per year. There would have been customers that would have paid $751. I felt it was important for this time around to include that in the Schedule A because it will give uh, the general public a, an idea. So, uh, Rates for any new dwelling or transfers of ownership, um, since they will be hard to, to be able to decide, we are going to start them at a tier two and then uh, decide from that. Uh, multi dwellings we build at a single flat rate of three hundred and fifty dollars per year. Per unit per year. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I'll just continue on to some other ones that are uh, <clears throat> important uh, with the commercial. Uh, low consumption commercial will be built at a single flat rate of five hundred fifty dollars per year. That's tier one. Um, staff can review and determine those as, as required. So they would be your small businesses that. Probably Maybe just have a bathroom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, water rates to be calculated at five dollars and eighty-eight cents per thousand gallons um, for the others. Uh, for commercial sewer rates, it's the same as the. It's a levy, so that stays at five hundred fifty. That feeds the water in your sewer together, and uh, for the others, the sewer rate will be a flat rate of three hundred and twenty-five dollars. The Another one for for this uh, for discussion is actually the school uh, user rates. Um, when you look at them, um, and 
Kristen, I mean, you might be able to explain it a little bit better than, than I, but the I, I found it a little confusing with the water actually coming in cheaper than, than the sewer. Generally, it's the, the other way around, but that was just through a calculation I had done. So I'll give you a chance afterwards if you want to think of <laughs> that. Maybe I'll keep going, but uh, that was through discussion with Geraldine, uh, trying to figure out what that number That's was. Per, it was per head, right? Student. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. It's, uh, For every 15 yeah. students. It, so it's the yeah. So the bigger the school, the more the more they the more they pay, of course. And there's more kids and uh, children and staff. So uh, it's a it's a per 15 students is what we go by. So and industrial user rates, uh, we're going to uh, charge them the same as uh, as commercial rates. A couple other minor ones: uh, um, the disconnection of service. Uh, uh, Currently, in the past, we had charged twenty-five dollars to turn the water on or, or off. Uh, we're wrapping that from twenty-five to fifty, and uh, one hundred fifty dollars fee if it's after regular working hours. So, if we have to call a member of the public works department in, and uh, also going to start uh, a fee of fifty dollars applied to a bill when uh, calculating cost for uh, a closing sale. So, um, we currently don't do that. Where a lot of other municipalities uh, do that. Anybody have any questions so far? Let's see, uh, what would be the average cost for hooking up a sewer or a water sewer? Factor? So that is, that's a, to, yeah. yeah, that's a kind of a hard one. And, and the reason why I say it's, it's a hard one to do is because if the water and sewer ran down the middle of the street for on every mm -hmm. street, you could kind of calculate that. But there will be times where, say, the water's on the left-hand side of the street. You live on the other side. You and I are neighbors across. I want to pay more than you because I have to go across the street. So that's the hard part about doing the um, actual, uh, actual cost is the uh, uh, certain sites are going to. I think of um, Elizabeth Street, that the sewer is actually on the grass on that side. So for the people on that side of the road, um, it's grass restoration and some pipe, right? The other side, you have to dig up the whole street. To so. give you a little bit of an estimate, then we were doing our research and looking at past costs to the town, somewhere between five to seven thousand yeah. is a fair assumption on a connection cost. And again, <laughs> you know, I know we've talked about this a lot. You've heard me say this a lot. We need to treat this like a business. We cannot just do this for hundred dollars we need to recoup the cost that go ahead catch it when you're saying that cost did that include like the hours to pay the staff or that was materials probably? i believe like have factors and yeah. cost labor into that yeah. too that would be full cost so to... i actually won't be here the day of yeah most potentially because i'm working on the 27th but just out of curiosity um where greg was saying that some municipalities are playing we're only charging 75 percent I was just going to say, theoretically, if that's what we decided to do, could it be possible to just charge for materials and then we cover the label as a incentive to have to move and move stuff or something? My suggestion is going to be we let this lie for now and see. We can change this every year if we want. We can update the bylaw if, you know, it's not like we're, I, I see, I wish I could see 100 homes being built here, but we're not, right? We're only going to see a test case here of about a, I don't know how many that would connect to water this year. So let's see what it actually costs and what what people come back before we panic too much. There are lots of places that have a flat fee of eight to ten thousand. Whether it costs them two or three or four or five, they're charging so that they know they recoup full. So we again, there's everyone's all over the place, but right now we're not in this position where we can afford to be all over the place or be lenient, we need to collect so that we can pay for a substantial amount of um, infrastructure repair and maintenance. So my suggestion is to, before we worry too, too much, we might, again, let it go for a year and see, go ahead, sorry, cancel ground. Well, to put it in a well and septic outside of town is yeah. definitely more. Yeah. 
if I could add to that too, so for new builds, you have to remember if it's a new subdivision, they're already serviced to the property line. Yeah. So they're just doing their own in anyway. So it, by doing a something like that, will probably incentivize <coughs> new construction. Um, this will be when you have to replace an existing water yeah. water and sewer. Uh, another thing that we consider down the road too is you know if you, you need new water service, well, we'll give you a real good deal since we're going to have the street dug up. Let's replace your sewer at the same time so you're not back there in five years or four years mm -hmm. doing it. So will there be some grandfather clauses for because there are residents in the town that have their sewer? We don't know where they go. Before it gets to the town property, what, what's going to happen? Like, will you grandfather houses that are staying in the Um, can I speak to that one just because I have a really good thought on it? But I would say if you read the writing, both parties have to agree to this. So I think you've got a pretty good argument if your sewer, your water runs on an unnatural um, right of way. So I think that's where we would have, that would be to staff, CAO, and the individual work out what's fair. I don't think we can expect that that's going to be, a, especially if it's going under someone's house on another street, we do know that that exists out there. Uh, it, it is our reality. Um, so that would be my comment. I think the caveat that's there, that both have to agree, and it's based on an estimate, should that would be the opportunity maybe we need to add a little clarity around yeah. the yeah. wording that if there's um where there's an unnatural right of way that we have to that we will work together to or use the or, yeah or something i think we just need to because that would potentially impact more than just that <clears throat> one property depending on what it is yeah. what the situation is but I like to think that those anomalies over the years we found them all, but I can think of <laughs> since you said that a few. <laughs> Dirty Mary, I can think of at least three. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, until you know what the situation is, uh, uh, you have to address it then, I guess. But uh, I, just, I have a question on the uh, the labor and equipment. Um, both sides have to agree, so. Do you envision like a, a possibility where a homeowner has an issue and they need their water and sewer removed and they want to explore getting quotes from other places besides the town, say they know Joe Blow, so, everybody has a uh, mini excavator yeah. or whatever. Like, if they want to do that work on their property, they're more than welcome to. They have to get a plumbing permit to do it. Um, however, anything on the municipal right of way, um, Either we do it, or we over we would have to overlook it. So, yeah, and we've done that before. We might have hired a contractor because of an excavator, or it's winter time, and um, or there's just been so much on the go that we'll send a couple of our guys with a contractor. But few and far between does that happen. But we've had where all of a sudden a sewer collapses on the resident, and you know, great, we'll change the schedule to do it. But usually, we'll just stop what we're doing and address that. I feel like I thought we put wording and language in here though that specified that we were we had to oversee it. Not not giving the property owner the right in a repair. On their property? Or yeah, no? both repairs. Just one second. <clears throat> That would probably be a good thing to clarify. Yeah, I could that, see that. Yeah, being but I thought we had issue. discussed that substantially that we really wanted to maintain control over that, so that and if we if the town chooses to hire some, someone out, that's our decision. But okay, we do need to look at that. It was I remember discussions I had with Greg. Um, that if the homeowner wanted us to continue in, we would do so, but at an additional additional mm -hmm. cost. Right. That, that's all that's yeah. Is that's that that's different? Different. yeah. Okay. No, but that, oh, that yeah. needs to yeah. be very clear. Yeah. 
I can just see it in like mm -hmm. quite a few instances where I'll oh, well, my buddy owns a mini excavator. I'll just get him to come in and dig that out the line out from our house out to the street type of thing. And then yeah. you're waiting on them and they're waiting on you. And it's you know, yeah. creating a. Yeah. That can anyway. be considered mischief, but uh, there's no reason why we still can't put that in the in the schedule to say that. Uh, um, we, we have to clear. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we want to make sure that's there too. And are we still going to be studying the smart meter? You bet. Effective like third reading. Is this going to be what's still considered a term yeah. project that we're looking at? Or yeah, and that should be duly noted by uh, Jim because <laughs> I think we get that question a lot or that seems to come up because it doesn't necessarily. Uh, get clarified and if they're not watching tonight or they're not reading the minutes um, this is not permanent the whole intent was that we need something to be able to function here the next few years and get things stabilized enough so that maybe we can look at what a smart metering system might do for us and what that might cost and and build and work towards that but um, again, someone drew on what the city of St. John is doing, but I'm not sure if they didn't read the whole article to see that that was a 10 year out plan. So the city of St. John is now looking at smart metering because they are doing and have been doing flat rates for a long time. Um, and quite frankly, their flat rates are about 15 to $1,600 per year. So way higher than ours what we're proposing, but they're in a very similar situation than we are with the number of users that contribute. So they are looking at possibly changing to a metered system, but it's 10 years out and they haven't committed to it. They're trying to study to figure out how could we get there and is it worth it based on the number of users we have. So we're in the same situation you want to look at it our timeline is essentially as deputy mayor just noted three years that's what we said we want effectively before this council goes it would be or has finished our term we would like to ideally have a decision made so again once if this gets through first and second reading third reading then that puts a bit of a timeline on and a start to some new practice of um, documenting monthly what our usages are so that they can start comparing them month over month, year over year, um, that and we council can set kind of frequencies for when we would like to see some type of an update on that and that they'll be monitoring and watching that so that we can see if, you know, we expect to see uh, a peak. We're also launching this in the most heavy water <laughs> usage time of the year. So we would, we, we shouldn't be shocked by that, but most towns that switched and cities did say it settled back to a, a a normal that wasn't too crazy high that they accepted so i think we need to you know study this for a while and then identify who on the staff the cao will have to identify who's going to take this on and really research the smart metering and start to look into that right away because if if it looks like that's a feasibility, what's it cost? How long is it going to take us to save? Because again, um, we can look for funding, but utility needs to pay for utility. It's got to have its own, it's 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 its own separate business, essentially from all our other um, finances, really. It's got its own set. So we that fund needs to pay for the smart metering. So Again, the first estimate we had was upwards of $2 million. So when we have $5 million worth of infrastructure to fix, I don't know, is that worth it to do right now? Is it probably the right choice to make it the most fair and to ensure people are trying to do the right thing by conservation? Yes, but again, we could argue we have still very little control over conservation for residential units because less than 30 percent of them of our our entire community now are actually tapping into the resource the biggest the other biggest consumer are the commercial they're still metered 
So we still have insight into their what they're doing. Their rates are going up. So we would expect they're going to try and do all they can to conserve. So there's a lot to consider. And that's good conversation to have over the next year or two. We're hoping that the staff does, does a good job researching. We know that there's companies out there that specialize in this. We had already, I know Geraldine and her research had already identified one or two that we were looking to maybe speak with to get more information. So we're not saying this is permanent, but we're saying it's the interim solution. And again, um, those that are that meet the qualifications as identified in here for low income will get a discount that will help put them back closer likely to what they would have been paying before. Um, everybody's going to largely see some level of increase here, but again, it's a, a mixture because we picked uh, an average. So anytime you pick an average, there's going to be some that benefit more than others. That's the reality. And we are allowing the 12 months to pay, whereas before, I think it was after 90 days that interest started, so we're allowing 12 months to equalize the payment and to, to, try, to try to get people to sign up to the portal to do one online. So I guess the other part was that yeah. we are going to be putting on a paper fee that if you want to stay on statements, stay on paper uh, invoice, we're going to be adding a fee to do so, so that we can kind of incentivize people to sign up to the portal and pay on the portal, which then creates efficiencies again if we are going to allow equalized billing we don't want to have to touch 12 payments for every single resident because again that creates more kind of burden on the staff so if we can get it that they do it online it's kind of we don't touch it it goes through it's all it's all integrated with our accounting software and make it easier so there is that be that if you want to stay on paper as well any other questions thoughts concerns council Bradford I'm not really right now. <laughs> I see the points that you're making. You know, I'm still getting a lot of pressure from the community to go to higher costs and stuff. But I do thoroughly understand that. And I like your point too, where you know this is just like a pilot project. You know, not, not a pilot project. That might be the wrong language to use, but going forward, it is going to be studied, and we could be going back to another type of meter. Uh, I'm very concerned about water uh, covers conservation, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I think that still should be something that we as a community should be championing, yeah. you know, on our website, stuff like that, and, yeah. you know, get that message out. Yes, and yeah. that, that is going to be something, and we talked about tips and tricks on the bills that go out, um, everything like that. We've got a, a plan moving forward to really inform, better inform. We've also talked and going to get at some point um, an annual water summary and, mm -hmm. and report of what it is we've done and what it is we plan to do so that the community better understands you know really truly how many meters you know how many football field lengths of infrastructure do we actually have buried that we have to maintain and try and give some information that the community can better understand what we're doing or what we're dealing with and then also what we're doing what we're planning to do this year and next year. And so we've got to get better at communicating those things because I think we just haven't really done a lot of that in the past and we need to now just so that they can understand how you know this, this is important and critical. And again, it's a certain percentage of our population now that will even get the information. <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to say that I kind of uncomfortable what Mr. Harry said, but what I've been talking to the people who were complaining about the cost increase though, is the fact that there's a lot of people only going up by like $100, $150, $10 a month, $12 a month, whatever that is. And if you do go with the monthly thing, I mean, there's two ice caps. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's all relative, right? I know it seems like a big increase, but when you're looking at that annual, all inclusive, it's really not that much. But then when you add on everything else that are, that's going up. Hundred you know, like percent. Sure the, the carbon tax is coming down yep. in July, right? Mm -hmm. We're looking yeah. at about seventeen cent increase in fuel, right? So the elastic band is being stretched on everybody, right? So we yeah. gotta be very <laughs> careful if we're starting to not increase of any kind because our 
the residents, everybody is, is just being stretched to the max. I just don't know when that elastic is going to break. That's what I'm concerned about a lot of people. Interest rates are up, fuel's up, you know, that, and that groceries are up, and that all affects your household income, which is the most important. Yeah. Who cares if you can't afford a big truck or an ATV anymore? But we're talking about basic stuff here that everybody needs. I, I think we're in a really sticky situation, and unfortunately, this council's been put in a position where <laughs> our infrastructure is struggling drastically. Yes, and, well, and we are getting to a point that could go really yeah. badly the other way. So I do know what you're saying. And, and we are seeing that inflation too, like with the cost yeah. of our materials and, and gas. And so, it, like, we, like, as you know, consumers and, and residents are doing it, so like, we too, like, those. Those cost increases are being passed on to us too, and we need to buy the fuel for our trucks and our equipment. And when, when Greg is buying supplies for his his um, like terms, but you know his fixing pipes and whatever, like you know all of our costs are um, essentially up to us. That's where too is that it's you know hard for us. To, we can't really just eat that cost because again we have the balanced budget, and so we we need to pass that on as well, which yeah. it, it all sucks. I, I yeah. totally get it. We talk, it's talked about every day, anytime anybody steps into the grocery store, it's shocking. <laughs> you know, you, have to, you know, it, it is shocking to, you know, and we know that this adds an additional strain. Again, I will argue every time this comes up, the municipalities are not allowed to run a deficit. So we are not in the same position as the provincial and federal governments who, quite frankly, are responsible for the largest portion of the taxes that everybody is, is dealing with. And yeah, they have a lot of control to make change where we do not. So we need to continue to push those at the provincial level and at the federal level to help with the burden of how people can survive and basic income right and again um we can't as much as we empathize with everybody water is the only resource that no one can live without and if we didn't have it it would just it, it wouldn't be good for anyone in the community whether you use it or you have a well or sewer it's going to impact everyone if the water's off that one period that we had last June, June, a year ago, shut everything down, completely, the entire community. We don't want to, we don't want that to be our norm, and we don't want to end up having to restrict development or be being concerned about additional development because our system can't handle it. We need housing. Everybody needs housing. So we, we just aren't in the same position as other levels of government. Unfortunately, we're coming in at the same time as all of these other increases, and it, it, it's definitely a sting. I get it, but we, we're not in a position where we can do much about it other than I think, given the situation, our water is still largely inexpensive compared to everyone else. It's a big jump, but we were very, very cheap. For a really long time and unfortunately I just don't believe in that if we'd have been over the last 10 or 20 years been planning and booking and working on infrastructure and slowly increasing as appropriate we wouldn't even be having this conversation today so we're playing catch up and then you know it's left to us to make a bigger jump than we would ever really want to we don't want it to have to increase as substantial as we are right now, but we just don't have any other choice. We really don't. But I hope that moving forward, we maybe we find that there's a better way to do this that we can somehow manage to figure out and afford. And that's going to be staff's job to dig in and find out. Anybody else have any questions on anything for Kristen or for the CAO? I know at least we can, there is time to continue to read this. You really should read it thoroughly. Make sure there's nothing that's, that you don't understand that you think a community member's not going to understand. So again, you can just get in uh, Councillor Bellier's question is good because it allows us to make sure that that's, that item is crystal clear. 
If we don't have any other questions, I guess we're to the point where we, I can ask if somebody is ready to make a motion to proceed with the first and second reading of bylaw 160.1, a bylaw regulating the use of the water and sewer system of the town of Woodstock and the rates to be charged therefore by title. And we can, <laughs> we're happy about that. We're, here. we're very happy. <laughs> it's a very long bylaw to read if we had to read it in full. Um, so if, does anybody, would anybody be willing to make a motion? Moved by Deputy Mayor. We have a seconder, seconded by Councillor Williams. And do we have any questions? Concerns? <laughs> one, one quick question. Yep. We, we may have touched upon it on the tour of the wells. But can you monitor the amount of water that's being used prior and what's going forward roughly? They can see what we have meet, right? meters at every one of our buildings. Yeah. yeah. Or like pumping stations, yeah. so we can. Th that's a good way to monitor, you know. In fact, there's they been times daily. they do it, yeah, every yeah. day. There's there's meter readings yeah. taken. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, but they, uh, I remember in the past, there's been times where Greg will say, We got a water break. Oh, we're about, to, I don't know yet. He just knows because of the bomb. So. Okay, everybody ready for the question? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary aye. minded nay. Motion carried. We got to do that again. That was first yeah. correct? Yeah. First <laughs> do it again. <laughs> okay. So, could I get a motion to proceed with, I guess I said first and second, reading. but I can yeah. say the second reading of bylaw. 160.1, a bylaw regulating the use of the water and sewer system of the town of Woodstock and rates. You, did. you were supposed to read the type. You were supposed to read it, not? Yeah, if I should. Can I yeah. Okay. That? Yep. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> uh, bylaw number 160.1, a bylaw regulating the use of the water and sewer system of the town of Woodstock and the rates to be charged, therefore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so so round. Round. Second, seconder, seconded by Councilor McCartney. Everybody ready for the question? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded nay. Motion carried. Okay. <laughs> well. We have one more comment. Yeah, sure. Will you be? When would you begin the update? Like just so that we, like would we'll be a year in, uh, maybe a year in address or something like that, or for where we're like, sitting. like for the like this whole water, this whole water thing. Like. So when we do third reading, we're going to have a suggestion as to, and it, the CAO really needs to kind of figure out with staffing what we think we can do, but we can help kind of set that and make a recommendation. To CAO to take to staff that essentially we'd like to see quarterly reports on consumption or monthly to start or whatever it is that we want we can help kind of set that yeah, they, yeah. we do that like when back in the day when I used to look after the reports we have to submit reports to the province as mm -hmm. part of the Google operate and I know that every one of our well house all our buildings <clears throat> there's meter readings like I said we do daily but it's broken down into month to month. So that's done already mm -hmm. now. That's common. So if we want to do that even shorter or <clears throat> do one month, uh, that's. Uh, Wouldn't be the uh, Greg's report. Well, the, the, the yeah, and, yeah, and ultimately staff could right. submit it as part of. The biggest thing for me is that we'll need, for it to be meaningful, it needs to be compared year over year. <laughs> So what did last July yeah. look like, which they have the numbers for that. So that's a little bit of effort, but I think the CAO's admin team could handle that for as small as it is. So we, we can certainly, I think that's the plan is yeah. if this gets through third reading, then we're going to set some parameters around what we want to see. And do we want to see in a year at least some movement on, did we find a system that's worth investigating and 
what does that look like and what would that look like for costs? I think we can we can dictate that. Does that work? Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um you added something. Uh, no, we're not right to the PAC. No, we're not there yet. PAC. PAC. Yes. Okay, so item number 9.5, approval of PAC minutes from May 15th. CO, did you have anything to do you want to summarize that at all? Or? I'll summarize them. And if either Councillor Bellier or Councillor Bradbury want to add to it again, since they're both members of the PAC. So um, there was two items that came came forth. Uh, one was the keeping of chicken. I think that was our first chicken one. So um, yeah. <laughs> it. Uh, Anyway, it conditions uh, before in the old bylaw, of course, you couldn't have chickens. Uh, now um, you're allowed to have chickens in, in Ward 4. The other wards, of course, they, um, that doesn't apply to them. Uh, so no roosters, but uh, you can have up to six chickens. So uh, uh, Mr. Cook uh, decided he wanted to try some chickens. So um, they're the uh, PAC granted him the, uh, the conditional use to have to have chickens. I saw one. So I have a, I have a <laughs> chicken joke, but I can't. <laughs> no, I won't. Um, <laughs> the other one was a catering establishment that was on Strong Street. A um, uh, lady um, um, who's from India wanted to bring, I guess, the taste of her home country to Woodstock. And uh, it's going to be operating just on a Saturday um, out of our home. It's not a throughout the weekend, just a Saturday. And uh, we'll be taking the orders. People won't be coming. They will be, should be taking it to, to, to them is, is, the, is the plan. Um, and uh, that was a conditional use to have that type of uh, establishment, I guess, in, in their house. So they were the two items, and they were both, uh, both approved. So, you know, just help me out here. Do you need uh, a permit to have chickens? Yes. Yes, okay. So I guess when I'm when I big broader development, my, my opinion is, so if there's other residents out there that know that there are chickens being kept, which I have been told that there are, mm -hmm. they should report it to the town hall. Because I'm hearing that there's yeah. a few out there that are causing quite the problem with the smell, noise, and stuff like that. So this gentleman that presented to a uh, PAC was Sort of following all the regulations and stuff like that, but I do know that there are other yeah. places around town here that are not up to standards, and their the smell and the, the noise is, is quite something. So I strongly suggest that you get in touch with uh, town staff here at town hall. Mm -hmm. CAO, can we put something out to explain what the rules and what they're allowed to have so yeah. that everybody's clear on the It's numbers. not just as simple as yeah. having, yes, you can have it, uh, you're allowed. I mean, there are some guidelines that uh, you have to have to meet in order for it to, to happen. So, and one is, uh, to your point, uh, um, <coughs> you know, what are you going to do with the waste that the chickens, you know, what are you doing with that? So, and location on a, on a property too, right? Um, um, that's another key, key factor, so. Mm -hmm. It's not just as easy as going to buy six chickens and mm -hmm. them them yeah. all right. <laughs> Okay. So do you, I guess we've got um do I have a motion to approve the PAC minutes of May 15, 2023 as distributed? Make a motion. Moved by Councillor Bellier, seconded by Councillor Bradbury. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. And item 9.6, Library Board appointment. CAO, can you review that one? Or were you going to review that one? I Cancel the request off. Yeah. Um, find the original email. Uh, the Library Board had uh, a member. Uh, resigned. She was actually hired on staff, so she joined the uh, library staff. We had uh, an opening and remaining term, so the remaining term um, could be offered out. Uh, and they, uh, everyone had unanimously decided to offer the remaining term to uh, Arthur Smith. Arthur Slip. Wow. <laughs> I wanted to say Slipper. <laughs> so yes, to that, but um, it's a uh, temp process to go through. So Art um, was. Uh, 
his name is put forth for that winter. And as you, for new counselors, he was our, he was on the board. <laughs> he was the town representative. He was our town representative, so he's, he's well uh, endowed on that board, and they would like to have him back, so. He had a lot of uh, value and insight for us. Yeah. So could I get a motion to appoint Arthur Slip to the library board? There's your sign. Yeah. <laughs> um, Councilor Williams on the motion seconded by Councilor Bradbury. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. So will you, one CAO or Krista, one of you will reach out and just confirm that that's a done deal. So. I will reach out to Jen and send that through to our librarian, and they've got uh, the AGM this is Thursday anyway. Oh, so right. Yeah. Will be, they'll have the AGM, and then that will be the meeting piece. And a point. Uh, Perfect. Good point. Yeah, very good point. Good point. We did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have 9.7 uh, tender for recreation department trucks. Yeah, I'm going to talk about one to you. Okay, uh, as you recall, the last meeting when we left, uh, we said we would uh, put this back out again for the request for proposals for a truck for the recreation department uh, for a used uh, vehicle. So it was put out uh, for a used either four by four or four by two. Um, and it was also put on NBON so that uh, everyone in the province had the opportunity to, to do it. We did only have three, uh, we had four submissions by three, three companies. Um, yeah, four submissions by, by, by three companies, and there, as you can see in front of you, um, which Stock Toyota had submitted two, actually, and all four of them were four by fours. Um, which Stock Toyota, the first one um, was uh, 2016 with about 69,000 kilometers that came in about 55,000. They also had a 2022 that came in at $86,000. Um, CYV had a 2019. At uh, almost 49,000 kilometers for just under 55,000. And Corey Ford had a 2019 with 82,300 for, <clears throat> excuse me, 42,600. So, um, with the four submissions that we, that we have, um, it's recommended of those that uh, accept the submission from Corey Ford for 42,600. And sorry, that does include HST. I meant to. Yeah, that's the opposite, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that does include HST. So, mm -hmm. and with the wreck, Kristen, that would come off 100%. So, yes, 42, right. six, yeah, the less the full 15%. They get back yeah, they, they get, get the full HST. Yeah. So, it actually won't cost us quite that much. Do you want to figure that out now, yeah. Kristen? Yeah. <laughs> Do we want to? <laughs> I'm glad she said yeah. <laughs> What's your the one excluding you just instead? Oh, um, sure. It's up to you. I know you. I think I gave you one for first. That one. And that's yeah, actually, that's 30, the number. Yeah, 37,000. Okay, can you give me the exact solve? Oh, sorry, 37. Oh, 43. Okay. So this will be truck number five to add to this fleet, right? So we, I believe that's we're, what we're retiring was. one. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're caught up on, I shouldn't say we're caught up. <clears throat> we're done with the ones that we planned. I think there's probably sure some we. that would still need replaced, but we'll deal with those with next budget. <laughs> You're recommending? Yes. This one over the new. I mean, that we certainly recommend I haven't even asked for the motion. <laughs> We're so eager. You gotta wait. Okay. I already have two names, but I'll read it for record. Uh, could I get a motion to award the truck tender to Corey Ford in the amount of $37,043, excluding HST, as recommended by TAO Andrew Garnett? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Brown. All, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Entree, my name. 
Motion carried. <laughs> Excuse and me, we sorry. have an item that got added, and I might get some help from Kristen on this one. We are bringing it to you um, tonight. It's the one we added that is for consideration of an asphalt spreader lease opportunity. If you recall, in the conversations we had, we agreed to look at purchasing an asphalt spreader. But we also, at the same time, given the overall cost of the piece of equipment, we were going to look at whether there was an option to do any temporary leasing, even if that was a half year or a year. Um, we were given an offer of a four-month lease, and it's a tight time frame, and we thought that was uh, we should not miss the opportunity to discuss it with you. Kristen confirmed the price per month. So $9,000. Um, there is a little bit additional twelve hundred dollars for transport, but nine hundred dollars per month plus twelve hundred dollars total um, for the, to get it here, and then so four months only. Um, if we determine it works for our needs, we like it. We have the people. We you know doing it. We can then choose or have the option to purchase it. And ninety percent of the rental or the lease payments will go towards the cost. So. Um, we can we can get that back towards the purchase training. They will send people um, to give our team the training to to operate it. Greg, in conversation today, had said that um, he expects that um, one cut would would cost one month. Like basically, like just doing one cut would be a one a one month lease payment. And there's you know multiple 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 cuts that we want to do. Um, this month or this year, this summer, and I think to the point that the time sensitive is that there's only so many months a year that we can pave, so we want to get it as quickly as possible so we can utilize the four months. So it is a minimum four months. So if we get it in July, so obviously we, we would have those four months to, to get some paving done. Obviously, the cost of the asphalt would be in addition, but even with that, he still sees that it'll be a big savings, but it will kind of be a test that we'll know. We'll have, we have the opportunity to take these four months, see how it works for our needs. If we have the staff, if it, if it is saving us what we expect it to save, and then make the decision after that of whether or not we want to go ahead and purchase it, or if it's just that maybe we're not ready for it at this point or whatever. Like, I think it's really good that we should have an opportunity to see see how it fits our needs and, and then go from there. Anyone have any questions on that? I mean, Greg's not here, but Andrew, you and I can both speak to I mean, we've looked at costs. Go ahead first. Yeah, we have the finances. To buy an asphalt enough to give this a good test, but typically because we talk about getting this to do some of the side streets that are in really bad shape, mm -hmm. do we have the finance? Well, I think that, like when, when, we, when we had the strategic planning sessions, we had determined I think, about four hundred thousand dollars for paving. So again, if if we're able to save some of that to make it go further, then mm -hmm. I think then that's where we'll come ahead. And I guess the other conversation we had today too was that because this can be used too for paving if we have a water main break or have to dig up for so that we can share the cost in utility too, if we can kind of do a shared cost of that, whatever it's used for doing paving due to water sewer issues, we can we can bill that back to the water sewer um, department. So if you, to. if you recall when we agreed to the amount to do at minimum seven um well <laughs> seven uh, uh valves. 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 <laughs> thank you. Um, seven valves. That's seven cuts that'll probably cost in the range of eight to ten grand each. That if we had to pay somebody to come in and do, now we'd have the spreader to be able to do the work and do it correctly. We'd have to obviously buy the asphalt, but at least at this point we can do the work, explore what the savings would be long term. Plus, there's they're going to, um, you know, it, I think. It, it's probably going to take their full team to use it, but then we get to play with the fact that what if we had two or three people for the summer that was dedicated and the right equipment, and can it do a side street? Can Are they capable? And that's what we really need to test out and explore. Um, so I think it's a good opportunity, in my opinion, to explore the equipment without having to commit the full way, especially if we agree that and this one is one of the ones that he had shown us as a spec as an option. Sorry, go ahead. Can you refresh my memory on remember the recycler yep. too? 
Is that can That's we... probably going to land on next council. <laughs> but I'm just thinking if we yeah. have the recycler and yeah. as we strip, mm -hmm. if we have the stripper or the spreader, yeah, then maybe that we could recycle some of that too. Yes. So we'll they'll stockpile. And I just wondered where we were on that. Yeah. yeah there the demo that Deputy Mayor um, and I went and watched uh, in the research. So. That Greg went and did further research on different options there and basically there's a different unit that a lot of the other cities have gone to moving towards because they find the portable one is maybe doesn't quite it's not big enough for a lot of the jobs that they're doing and we would argue when we saw it that day that it took mm. eight loads and so they're they've used to they moved to stationary recycling units and then they travel with a hot box so they'll take all of the um asphalt that's ready put it in this hot box it keeps it the way it's supposed to until it gets to the job and then they spread it that from the hot box as opposed to the one that we went witness they carried that little asphalt recycler unit was carried behind the a, a truck essentially on a trailer, I think it was on a trailer, was it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is still, which we all agreed, was a an invaluable purchase. So I think what we're hoping to see, Kristen, if we get everything, is um, there they would tender out that the different one and a hot box, and then we'll see what the cost come back, and that would land at cancel. Hopefully, I don't know, be tight for for the next one, but. That might need a, a special committee meeting to approve, but that's where they're at in the process. I don't know what everybody's thinking, but I, in my opinion, I think this is the direction to go. Yeah. We can we kind of get asshole. into the other this yeah. ourselves. I think it's going to save us a lot of a lot of money. Yeah, and mm -hmm. remembering that the uh, asphalt recycler then allows us to hot patch all year. And that's going to save because uh, they went up our street, the street, the court that I live in with this, the street sweeper tore up every patch that they put in all along the way. I was like, oh, ouch. And that's what gets avoided when you can hot patch all year versus cold patch half the year and through the winter. Well, and again, we might be taking over the roads everywhere. Listen, <clears throat> then now we can talk with, really talk with DTI. Right? Do you yeah. want us to fill those buttholes? <laughs> Here's your price. No, Maybe we can, if, again, we talked about if the if capacity is a constraint for DTI, maybe we can help solve that. But it will certainly, for us, for budgeting, it's important that we know what that's going to take for a crew for that to really be successful. So does that mean next year we have to budget to hire for Greg to have a bigger team? So we need to know those things now. So this gives us the ability to, um, I think, explore that. So any other, do you have any other thoughts, I guess? Or? No, I, it's, yeah, I, I mean, agree with it. It's hard to... I just I feel like there was something about Greg was going to check with some of the municipalities that yes. have used it to see mm -hmm. how is it lasting. Yes, the and, and the results were good to the point where again there we're seeing municipalities buy more, buy more, mm -hmm. buy more equipment because they're capable of doing it, and then they're in control of um, when it gets done and what streets, and it just puts the control back. So we're seeing communities that have taken it on and be really successful. And I think Greg talked about going up to Bathurst to spend a day up there with their crew because they were like, come on up with it. They're all set up. They built it up over time, but they've got uh, multiple spreaders, different equipment. And uh, I think they're seeing better results on the streets and that's what we, where we need to get having some of this equipment will at least allow us when we're patching and repairing to do a better job and we can do even some of the smaller side streets probably in full. So that's, I think we're all in agreement that this yes. is the direction we need to go. Yes, they're big investments up front, but they'll pay for themselves. And then some, that asphalt recycler, I truly think 
if it works well and they can use it, will pay for itself pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So, and we have, I think, 40 tons already of asphalt sitting there ready to be recycled. And then again, as we're stripping and making cuts, they're keeping it all. So, and I know there's um, the opportunity to get from highway, from DTI, or from way when they do stripping, they're looking for places to take it. So, again, if we really get into that heavily, then that's options to look for. A lot of our streets for years were never planned. Right. And they just kept it. There's right. More, there's yeah. a lot of asphalt yeah. on some of our streets. Do you wait till you see them do the work down town square on the street? The, mm -hmm. the 18 yeah. layers of I can feel like it's there's, yeah. there's some streets there's a, there's a foot of asphalt. Yeah. So that's up when we get cut in a big chunk of it. So yeah, we can recycle it. Okay, so on that note, would we have uh, someone that would like to make a motion to agree to enter into a lease agreement, a four month lease agreement for an asphalt spreader for what did you say it was? 9,000 per month plus 1,200 for delivery? Yeah. Moved by Councillor Bradbridge. <laughs> Second in <laughs> Everybody's awake. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody ready for the question? Any more questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. Right. May. Motion carried. Woo! I'm excited. <laughs> Might be a bit of a geek. <laughs> Give you the way down. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I was, one thing I was I had wondered, and uh, Greg said he did he checked it, and apparently it's the uh, it's heavy enough, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's that was item nine point eight. So date of our meeting. Date of our meeting. Yep. Yep. So the date of our meeting will be. Um, Tuesday, June 27th, 2023. Is that uh, CIC and? It depends. It depends. We'll, we'll see if we need CIC. We'll confirm that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we do, do the yeah. CIC at six anyway. So. Yeah. Okay. To be determined, determined on the start time. <laughs> okay. So. Motion to move to committee of the whole. Yes. Okay. Could I get a motion to move to into committee of the whole? Sure. <laughs> by deputy mayor. Seconded by was that Lauren? Did you? Yeah. Up? yeah. Second by Lauren. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. My name. Motion carried. Everybody's fine. Breaking. This funny.